It is with great pleasure that I introduce today's featured speaker, Tim Kasani. Tim Kasani is a highly respected leader in the information technology and entertainment community, as well as a successful entrepreneur and generous philanthropist. He's a two-time and ITER alumnus, having received both his Bachelor of Science degree in Information and Computer Science and his MBA from UCI. As co-founder of Apple's and Orange's studios and IT mentors, Tim is known for creating work environments where technology and the arts converge. His experience in the entertainment industry and expertise in tech startups through enterprise IT combine in a unique way to press against the boundaries of both worlds. His studio's latest project, the Apple's and Orange's Studios Accelerator, integrate story development and distribution with emerging paradigms from the world of technology to create new musicals for theater, film, and virtual reality. On the more traditional Broadway stage, Tim and his wife, Pamela, have produced the Tony Award-winning musicals Hair, Memphis, and An American in Paris. And they're currently developing the musical Higher Education, for more than 25 years, Tim's IT development company, IT Mentors, has spanned the globe, seeking to improve companies' capabilities through insightful tech development and innovative teaching techniques. Tim is also one of our most valued alumni and corporate friends. Over the past decade, he has given back to the Donald Brand School by supporting students through scholarships, student-based projects, faculty research, and as an employer of our graduate students. Because of his contributions and achievements, Tim was induced into our inaugural ICS Hall of Fame at the 50th anniversary of UCI. He also received the 2017 Lodge and Laurels Distinguished Alumnus Award in ICS for his education at UCI and his subsequent career in the information technology and entertainment industry. Please join me in welcoming Tim. Well, 31 years ago, that was me sitting there, and I was thinking, I hope this goes quick, because we have fun things to do. <laughs> when you heard that ICS and humanities were going to be joined together, I'm sure, like me, you all went, of course. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> and when I was asked to give the speech, they told me, well, we couldn't think of anybody but you. And I thought, that's really sad. 31 years of graduated, I'm the only one that you can think of. Well, mainly it was because I didn't quite follow the norm when I was at UCI, which it's surprising that I'm even up here speaking, because I could have been one of those that they'd written off long ago. But luckily, they didn't. I, the word no is very prevalent in my world when it comes to things that don't quite fit in how I want to navigate. And when I look at the relationship between humanities and ICS, and, and actually before we go on, humanities, ICS kind of kicked you on the wall, here we are, so you get another shot. Come on, humanities, let's hear it. <laughs> all right, all right, much better. And so as I, as I was thinking about what to talk about, it's Father's Day, and I thought, well, fathers are great. I, I need to say something that my son, who's here in the audience, would cherish. And then it, when he makes a speech someday, he'll say the same thing. And I thought, well, then fathers, we got to call out the mothers. And now we got to call out the donors. And then pretty soon we're going to have to call out the robots and, because they're going to have children. And it got so confusing that I just said, you know what, let's, let's look at it from the perspective of the relationship between humanities and ICS and how the two are fundamentally dependent on each other. As Chancellor Gilman pointed out, our generation did a fantastic job of leaving you lots of challenges. <laughs> and as our featured speaker said, that's how you learn in the hero's journey. You need to die to be reborn, in fact, is one of the key tenets of it. So we've given you plenty of opportunities to die, and now it's your job to be reborn. <laughs> well, why did I come to UCI? I actually wanted to go to film school. And a friend of mine was coming down here to check out the campus, and he said, would you drive down? Now, this was before Irvine was the big megalopolis that it was. 
And as driving down, I noticed that we're getting very close to the beach. And I said, hmm, that's right near Newport Beach. And he said, yes, yes it is. And I said, I'm liking the school ever so more. So I chose UCI to surf. And I chose ICS because eh, it seemed like something that I might be able to get a job at when I graduate. And then once I got here, they tell you, all you need to do is focus on computer science. That day, I joined the crew team. And then after that, I ended up joining a fraternity and heading a ski club. And everything that I wasn't quite supposed to do, I was doing because it was fun and UCI was great. Well, all the way along in the computer science world, I still had this urge for the arts because I grew up with very long hair playing guitar in LA. And one day, a friend bet me that it was harder to take a dance class than to row on the crew team. And I thought, nah, come on, it's just a bunch of skinny people in tights. How hard can that really be? Well, it was the first thing that absolutely kicked my butt. And I sucked. It was embarrassing. But it was also a moment where I became inspired. And I said, I, I can do this. And from that point on, I was living this dual life where I would dance and do musicals during the day, and then I would compute and do things around the clock. And as I finished up my undergraduate work, I started getting job offers from prestigious companies, but I didn't want to grow up yet, so I said, let's do what all good kids do, spend two more years going to school. And hence why I, we, we don't need this thing anymore. <laughs> hence why I, can I just, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so can I? <laughs> I'll, I'll pick up my tassel. <laughs> so when we, in that two years is when I, quote, founded a company, which parents bought, but it literally was, I need to make enough money so that I can act. And in doing that, I found that what made me successful in computer science was storytelling, because I was building systems. And in building systems, you gotta talk to human beings. And in talking to those human beings, I learned that we were solving problems on a human level. And when we look at life as that, the days of the linear path are effectively morphing, and they're changing into this interconnected world. Now, when I was doing it, I actually had two different cars. I had a beat-up old Datsun that I would drive to auditions so that I didn't look like I had already made it because I wanted to get cast. And then when I was doing my computer science gigs, I had a nice car so that they didn't think I was a poor actor. And I kept the world separate. And one day, I even showed up to a colleague, and luckily they knew me, and I still had silver paint from playing the Wizard of Oz on my face, and they wiped it off. And it was this world where you could hide. Well, nowadays, in the way you connect and communicate, there is no hiding. And that is actually a very, very beautiful thing. And for me, where it all came full circle is when I met my wife, or now my wife. Another thing that I said, oh, you can't do, I was set up. I said, no, I don't get set up. And it ended up working out quite well. And we decided to create a nonprofit for the arts. And I learned very quickly that I don't like the word nonprofit. I like making money. <laughs> I do. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, you should all enjoy making money for work that you do. And a good friend of mine said, well, don't look at a nonprofit as a business plan. Look at it simply as a tax status and treat it in the same way that you entrepreneurial love to build systems. And that's what we've been doing ever since. And we were asked to come in and help produce the musical Hair. And I said no, because I didn't want to be a producer. I was now a director and a writer. But after listening to the soundtrack, there was one line that came up. And that line was, when the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter aligns with Mars, then peace will guide the planets and love will steer the stars. Very poetic. What's great is if you look it up on the internet right now, you get people saying, oh, come on, Jupiter always aligns with Mars. It happens every two years. But then I learned it and I looked at it and I said, huh, there's a real meaning to this. And the hence is the age of Aquarius. And the age of Aquarius began either 11-11, 2011, or 12-12-12, if you want. And the cool thing about the age of Aquarius is we've moved from this Piscean age, which is a very structured age, the to be or not to be age, where you have these gatekeepers, these people that need to give you permission to do what you want. 
Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. There's wonderful structure in these people. And that might come from your government, your churches, your universities, your social groups. And you effectively earn your way up, and people will grant you things like degrees, or they'll give you raises. And we grew up learning that that is a system in how we succeed. Now, the challenge in that is what is success? There's been a million studies that say success really doesn't have anything to do with money. Money does give you some freedom to do what you want to. But when you look at the people that are really successful, the ones that laugh a lot, it's because they're doing something that they wake up and they go, huh, it's pretty cool what I'm doing. Maybe I'm helping somebody. Maybe I'm changing the world. And that's now accepted. And without getting too new agey or touchy-feely and talking about the age of Aquarius and all of those fun types of things, the big premise of it is that the power lies in the network. And if you look at computer science, well, that's how we started. We started with a mainframe. And then when you look at Unix, the slogan was, the network is the computer. Now, what does this mean to you? It means you don't have as many excuses as I had when I was sitting there about creating your own world. Because whether it is music, where that's greatly changed, or film, or theater, or being an entrepreneur in Silicon Valley and building an app, or creating robots that cause world peace, or genetics, or microbiome, or all these things that are coming, like self-driving cars and self-driving human beings, then you're going to be creating those. And the only advice I can give you in doing all of that is have fun and do it in a way that moves you and the world forward. I was at the U2 concert the other night, and the Joshua Tree is the concert that I was at. And it was one of my perfect moments because when I was, this was 30 years ago, is the album, which is very significant for me because this is when I was at the university and following that. And Bono at the time was, was kind of angry. He was one of those that was changing the world with a fist and really needing to make a difference. But now he was up there just having an amazing time. And the way he was passing on that message was so, so inspiring. And the best part was One Republic opened up for them. And I absolutely love One Republic. So you put the old and the new together. And the lead singer from One Republic has amazing messages in his music. And he said that his favorite song is What a Wonderful World. And I thought, wow, a positive rocker who's actually quoting old lyrics to their songs, how absolutely cool is that? So here's what I leave you with. A few basic things. Live below your means. Don't go out and buy a bunch of junk. Go to Broadway shows. That's a very important thing to do. But don't buy a bunch of junk. Laugh. As the chancellor said, use kind words. It doesn't take a lot. And here's the one, when people say, well, what is the secret to success? There's one thing to me that always comes to mind. This is called anticipation. This is what you do. <laughs> Solve problems, don't create them. I 100% guarantee you will stay employed and you will, and money back guaranteed, in fact, that you will find what you want if you are a problem solver. Because when you're solving problems, you're helping. You're helping people. And when I thought, well, what, what is that one piece that I would love to leave my son with? Two things came to mind. One is another quote from Hare, which says, the opposite of war is not peace, it's creation. And that led me to, if I can be remembered as a person who helps people unselfishly, well, then I've achieved what I've wanted to achieve. Hopefully, I've helped you just even slightly a little bit. And lastly, have a great time and give back because you get more than you give. And that's from the Alumni Association. <laughs> but I can say that firsthand because that's where I connected back to UCI is when I came back on a fluke and started looking at what I could do. And it all came together for me because it made me realize that 
In this day and age, there's lots of ways to learn. You can go online and find it, but it's that sense of community. And how cool is it that you have this community now and a global community that you're part of? So find a way to mentor, find a way to share, find a way to teach because you learn more yourself. And when you do it with an open heart and you give back, the world just opens up. It magically does. So enjoy, and most importantly, congratulations. <laughs>